all right, all right, Michelle is back. Uh, I think I had given a story not too long ago on um, my experience uh, with an elderly, elderly uh, female who was living by herself in a, uh, you know, in a community where you know the, the, the exterior was taken care of, but the interior is basically her responsibility until she was unable to do so. She was in a wheelchair and she couldn't keep her house clean, this and that and the other, and she became a victim of fraud. Okay, so I want to tell you about a situation involving a black elderly female and that same, in, in, the, in the community. I mean, it's all the same culture that I, I, I decided to work in that culture myself. And like I said, because of the children there, you know, and, and the children, uh, the children lived within two miles of their school they had to walk, but if they lived out two two miles outside of that, they had to they could take a bus. So most of those children were walking. Most of those young black and Latino kids were just you know was just I mean they were just walking, and they were very very uh, had that rhythm to understand um, the flow of traffic, and and there was not many of them that was hit by vehicles. That's my point. There there was not many. Uh, fatalities involving juveniles when I lived in that community, but there were a lot of fatalities and stuff involving adults. Okay. All right. So contemplate on that. Anyway, I want to tell you about a situation involving this black elderly female. She was like 80, I think she was like 80, 86 years old. And so what, what's been happening? All right. And she lived in the black culture that's being eroded and, uh, you know, whatever. So, um, so what has been happening is that she had, she had been calling and calling and calling and calling and saying that I'm, you know, I mean, guess who she's calling and calling and calling and calling. But anyway, saying that someone had broken into, had been breaking into her house and this and that and the other and blah, 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 blah. And so, um, apparently three people, let's call them people had, had gone out to her house and, you know, and so-called investigated Let's, let's call it that. It's, and, and, and everything was always unfounded, unfounded, unfounded. So she called again. And um, the call, they told me to go out there and, and investigate. And I can remember being pissed that day. You know, I was pissed because I had to come from all, I, I remember coming from a, 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 a distance, a, a long distance just to get to this woman's house. And I can remember just being pissed off, okay? I told you I was a first responder, so figure out what the hell I was first responding to. <laughs> but anyway, so I remember I, I can remember I was pissed. But I'm like, God damn it, what the hell? You know, because I, I was figuring this is. I mean, I, I was saying to myself, God, is she is this is this is this, it, it, you know? I was just thinking, well, is she delusional? Is she is she this and that and the other? You know, because we get that, we get that a lot. And um, and and and, and what pisses me off about it is how we handle it. You know, but anyway, so I can remember being pissed. And then I looked at the history of us going out there and it was always unfounded. You know, she said somebody was coming in our house. So I said, okay, all right, cool. So when I get there, you know, I kind of assess her and, and, and talk to her uh, while I'm doing it. So, okay, first of all, what I usually do is I kind of look around the perimeter to see, okay, if anything can be done, how it can be done. All right, so while I was looking around the perimeter, you know, her house was, bur she had burglar bars already all around her house. Burglar bars on the doors, on the windows, you know, in her own prison, actually. Gosh. But anyway, I don't think they build houses like that with those burglar bars because they, they were unsafe, uh, you know, to a certain extent. But anyway, so I, I look around, I, I figure, well, I don't know how they would get in because, uh, you know, the, the, the way her house was situated, I mean, it could be seen. Anybody can see who's coming in or out of our house based on where the, how the house was situated. And right, you know, her, her neighbors and this and that and the other. So I'm out, I, I, I look at, I do that. I, I look at the perimeter and I say, well, I don't know how they would have gotten in. But anyway, so I go in, talk to the woman and she's lucid. She, you know, like I said, she was like 85, 86. And she knew her name. She knew this. Knew da, 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 da. So she started explaining to me that, um, she has a room in her house that it's like a craft room where she does her, her yarning and, you know, crafts and, you know, 
there's a sewing machine in there. A lot of a lot of um, fabric and stuff like that, purses and this and that and the other. You know, kind of like her little her little getaway room. You know, do her her creativity, her creativity room. That's what that was. So she said, um, you know, that stuff had been she she she's been calling because she says stuff has been moved around. Mm. And I, you know, and while she's talking to me, of course, I'm I'm still looking around. I'm looking around in the room. I see the burglar bars. I see that she has uh, b mini blinds. But anyway, I'm listening. I'm still listening to her as she's saying, "Yeah, I got, I got my purse." She said, "Purses have been moved around. Purse, some of my drawers have been rummaged through." Uh, and then she says, "Whoever's doing it keeps coming back, coming back, coming back." Because she says, "Now purses, now property is missing, like purses and you know, kind of." Um, I mean, minimal amounts of uh, personal effects were missing. All right, and she says. And like I said, this woman's lucent, talking very lucid and clear, and she didn't sound like she was rambling or delusional to me. I understood her clearly and effectively. So um, so what I did is um, I said to her, well, go ahead and start filling out this. You know, I gave her some forms to fill out. And I said, let me go outside and just kind of inspect, you know, the perimeter of your house. So I'll go out and I look around. Look, you know, and I'm looking. I, I hadn't touched anything yet. I'm looking. I'm like looking at the burglar bars, and I go all the way around the house, and I go to the window where she was having all the issues, right? Okay, so I, so I, so I, I, I just kind of stand there, right? I stand there and I look to see if somebody may have tried to. I, I'm just looking for something. I don't know. I'm just looking. I'm looking for something. Looking, looking, looking. So I'm looking, and I'm looking. And all of a sudden, my, my attention went to her burglar bars on that particular window where all the, all the activity was taking place. And, and I started looking at the burglar bar, and I was like, well, what is different about it? There was something different about it. And I kept looking and looking and looking. And then I put my gloves on, and I touched the bar and pulled it open. And what I was, what I saw that was out of place was somebody apparently cut, used some type of welding equipment or something to uh, cut down, do a, um, a vertical cut on the on the burglar bar, where you wouldn't, if you had not pulled it, you would not have known that it that that was even there, that cut was there. So I said, oh my gosh. So what I did is immediately go around and check the others. The, the others were fine. I tried to pull them; they were I couldn't open them. Okay, it's only when I went to that particular window, I pulled it and it came open. And anybody could have just slid right on in there. So why the three people that were out there prior to that didn't catch that? Hmm, good question. So we just got to do better how we treat our elderly people. Okay, if someone's speaking to you lucidly, Clearly and effectively and telling you that somebody has been in her house, you need to, I always go the extra mile for people always, I've always done that. You know, that's just in me. Even if I don't even care for the, you, even if for people that, that are cursing me out and caring, I still gave them the same kind of treatment as I would anybody else. Okay. So yes, somebody had been going in and out of this woman's house. Okay. Possibly it was a neighbor. Who knows? I think it was a neighbor. But the way they cut, the, you know, so apparently when this woman was going to church or going to the grocery store, this person may have started, you know, very slowly. Evo is patient, by the way. Evo is patient. And they kind of slice down the side. And and so you were able to close it. And, you would, and if you weren't paying attention, you wouldn't know that that was there. You understand me? All it took if for somebody to go out there and pull that damn burglar bar. I'm done. I'm not going to say no more about that. But I'm saying, look, so if you say you care about people, you know, walk the talk or keep your ass home. All right. So I'm going to send peace and love to everybody all over the universe. You know, I'll be back.